It's a mega merger. HDFC Life and Max Life will merge in a three-step scheme. First, the unlisted Max Life will merge into the listed Max Financial Services and its shareholders will get one share of Max Financial for every five shares of Max Life. Thereafter, the life insurance business of the combined Max entity will be demerged and merged with HDFC Life. Max Financial shareholders will get seven shares of the new HDFC Life for every three shares of Max Financial. As a result of the merger, the new HDFC Life, that's the merged entity, will be owned 42.5% by HDFC. Standard Life will own 24.1%. The promoters of the Max Group will own 6.5%. Mitsui Sumitomo Insurance will own 7.8% and others will own 19.1%. In effect, Analjeet Singh and his family, that's the Max Promoter Group, retain 6.5% of the merged company, that's the new HDFC Life. Yet the shareholders of this new merged entity will pay Analjeet Singh an 850 crore rupee non-compete fee. Is this non-compete fee justified? And can somebody explain how that 850 crore rupee figure was arrived at? Well, I put all of these questions to the two companies, that is HDFC Life and Max Life, and they both preferred to remain silent, despite my repeated queries, that is. However, I'm hopeful that my two guests today on this very first show of The Fine Print will have some answers to my many questions. I'm joined today by corporate lawyer and the founder of Veritas Legal, Abhijit Joshi, and Anil Singhvi, the co-founder of governance advisory firm IIAS. Mr. Singhvi, Abhijit, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. I want to start by getting your views and quick views on the merger in itself, though we are not discussing the commercials of the merger here today. We're only discussing the issue of the non-compete fee, but that would be difficult to explain if we didn't get your views on the merger. Mr. Singhvi. I think the merger per se from business point of view is a good thing. Okay. I think because SDFC Life and Max put together will be a combined force to reckon with. Uh, they'll be ahead of the pack on this. So I think from, from all business uh, point of view, it merger is a, is, a, is a position of strength for both set of shareholders, no doubt about it. Yeah, mergers and demergers in same scheme are not unheard of. In yeah, fact, there correct. are many precedents to that. Uh, but uh, I. So therefore, it's a plain merger and uh, the jury is still out uh, and if it's not commercially sound, it won't get voted. If it's commercially sound, it will get voted. Okay, now let's get to the matter at hand, which is the non-compete fee. I'm going to get Abhijit's view on this first. Not very uncommon, right Abhijit? Uh, not uncommon, but there is always a tussle between the commercials and the regulators as to whether these are uh, payments uh, which deprive a certain section of shareholders of the same benefit. Uh, that the promoter or certain set of shareholders get. Uh, so not uncommon, uh, but it's an age-old debate uh, in different form. Um, uh, I think it goes to the crux of the situation is that is the non-compete genuine and justifiable? Um, and that's where I guess uh, you stand or fall on the proposition. Uh, in other words, uh, if the non-compete was not paid and the person concerned would compete, would it really affect and therefore paying them uh, something, is it justified and what is the justified payment? These are all subjective concepts um, and uh, whether it is used as a device or no will also be from uh, judge from case to case proposition. But yes, uh, common and often common that these are questioned. Per se, non-compete is uh, not really a right thing from minority shareholders' point of view and I want to take up where he left on that, that it's done in many cases but yet it is seen from both from regulators' point of view and from minority shareholders' point of view, not the best of the things to be done. But today when you talk about non-compete and goodwill, whatever name it is talked about, is basically for exiting shareholders. That if somebody is going out and that goodwill is left into the business, be it brand, be it distribution, networking, all that, then you can perhaps find some solution and something on this that I'm going to use all that goodwill, all that what he has built the business and he's exiting out, I may pay a little more to him than other shareholders. But in case of a merger, 
you mentioned the history of non competes the earlier takeover regulations were disputed at you know many various fora and it came to be understood or accepted that an up to 25% non compete fee would be permitted but if you look at the revised takeover yeah, code yeah 87 doesn't allow you it doesn't allow you non compete fee that's what i'm saying under the takeover now the takeover code only applies to takeovers it doesn't apply to schemes and mergers because those are exempt from the takeover code but it says very clearly that if it was a takeover then any non compete fee being paid to any one shareholder sure. or group of shareholders would have to be factored into the mandatory open offer price that would be paid to all other exiting shareholders don't you think that this is also an acquisition in the garb of merger and acquisition i mean you may still have a situation where you came together on that in fact if you look at the shareholder resolution and the explanation statement sent by both okay it talks about sdfc uh, life being acquired in a merge situation i don't think ever we heard or used the word acquire so you are merging you are not acquiring hmm. other businesses here it is very clearly defined acquire so just the language, back of just language i'm going to redirect that it is always to the in life there is nothing but language, language. i'm going to redirect that question to the lawyer abhijit i think the take over code doesn't say you can't pay you it only says that it has to be included in your offer price which means all shareholders get the same exit yeah. so price so therefore right? the question in this present situation is that whether this non compete in any way would have affected the swap ratio in a manner that shareholders of any of the companies would have got a better deal had this non compete not been paid now that's a question of valuation that's the question uh, but you've is, looked at the deal matrix if it if if this was not there and the swap ratio would have been uh, let's say a little better for certain shareholders then it is for those shareholders to argue that this is actually prejudices them like a public shareholder would have argued in a takeover situation that because of this non compete i am deprived of a better price and that's what sebi has tried to plug before we even get to that i think the point that mr singh we raised is very valid abhijit and it ought to be answered in a merger scenario which is that if that particular shareholder with at, at the end of the merger is going to continue to have some skin in the game which is in this case 6 to 7% of the merged entity what is he be pay, being paid a non compete uh, fee for or a goodwill fee interestingly it's been called non compete and goodwill and i suspect that's because it has to do with the contract law uh, that's how people have preferred to you know use that because contract law does not permit the prohibition of trade in any fashion. so i i would like to get your yeah. thoughts on that but that's ancillary the fact is anuljit singh and his promoter group will continue to hold 6 to 7% in the new hdfc life which is the merged entity and yet he is being paid a non compete fee you're a shareholder and yet you're being paid not to compete with the company that you own up to 6 7% in so there are three questions right one is that if you uh, if is the non compete justified only when you are exiting and if you are keeping a minuscule portion does it non compete not justified that's first question i would think not because it is the question is that whether you are so i i don't know what was the shareholding of anuljit singh in the previous uh, company if that was a large uh, shareholding and is being diluted to 7% it is of course it is so therefore, therefore there is an exit uh, the exit is not complete but having said that it has to be viewed from a different perspective whether mr singh competing against this merged entity would it be prejudicial to the interest of all the stakeholders at large but because wouldn't it be prejudicial to him if he continues only <laughs> 7% in the merged entity so that's a commercial question he would have 100% of the other entity and 7% of this entity no, and no he doesn't have 100% of that no i'm saying if he has a new entity which competes against uh, yeah, the but, merged entity but when you look at it that is going to be the largest as i said at uh, the opening remark on that it will be the largest life insurance company in the private that, sector in private sector yes. and even sdfc which was then the holding company you have sdfc life is ceasing to be the holding company yeah, so everybody is getting so diluted so he is yeah. also getting diluted on that yeah. and that scheme of things in a listed space he'll be still 7% owner of the largest uh, life insurance how can he even think about uh, competing with that kind of uh, entity which is there and he's passing on i mean he's saying he's passing on the max life is he the only owner of the max or the all shareholders are owner of the max as the Yes but he is so the explanation that his company officials you know were trying to tell me on the phone about and these were the points and I'll reproduce them and you tell me if there is merit in them or not they said look he's giving up what is a majority situation in max life and max financial services to now become a minority or relatively insignificant player in the merged entity he is giving up a whole series of rights because of that change in position and therefore he needs to be compensated he has also helped bring this merger together by convincing certain external parties to the merger for instance axis bank etc 
to put this merger together. So therefore, he's been instrumental in it. And they did not want to run into the situation where tomorrow, because he can effectively sell his 6 or 7% stake at any point in time, there's no lock-in, that he would sell that stake and then go on to set up his own insurance business. So that is their argument or their defense for why this non-compete fee is being paid. No, this is a very different uh, situation, Minika. Just apply your mind on that. That Max Life then getting merged with Max Financial Services, then you demerge the business, mm -hmm. and then you remerge with SDFC Life, right? Mm. So shareholders of Max Financial Services are almost at the same league as Analjit Singh is, right? Yeah. Okay. So if he is the one guy who's going to get this 850 crores. Hmm. Why the other shareholders are not to Because he them? was in majority position. This no, is their explanation. His he was a majority his, shareholder there and he no longer is one yeah, His shareholding is only coming down. Then in the, by that, in fact, SDFC also should get it. Oh, it was my subsidy company. It's easiest to be my subsidy company. So I was owning only a 67% of SDFC life. And now I'll own 43%. So from a majority 67%, I'm coming down <coughs> to 43%. Then SDFC should also write a big fat check from SDFC life saying that I've also diluted okay. myself. How? How do you differentiate SDFC and Analjit Singh? The two, dif two, two situations are different. How so SDFC will still be in a substantial shareholding position. No, no, no. Now you're what you're saying. Analjit Singh and Promoter Group what I'm, saying, what I'm saying is from controlling. Okay, and control <coughs> is normally, suppose it's defined. It's never defined. But 43 is a big difference versus 7. I right? agree with you. But but then compensation for that may not be 850 crores. Maybe write a 300 crores check and say that SDFC also, because 67 has come down to 43, so I also should have 200 crores. Now flip it around the other way around, where Abhijit touched upon a point. That if you look at 850 crores, okay, for about what uh, 81 million shares, right? It ah. works out to about 100 rupees per share. Yeah, there are many calculations going the on. No, yeah. it's a very simple one. Yeah. That what the family owns is, is, is as per that is 100 rupees per share. And the second point, which is said that suppose if this was the real 850 crore was put back into the kitty, right? How many more shares as SD, SDFC Live would have been issued is almost about one and a half crore shares. Which all ordinary shareholders also would have got had the 850 crore not been paid to Analjit Singh and put into the common kitty for benefit of all shareholders. So I want to know how you would explain the fact that a merged entity and shareholders of the Max Group which will become shareholders of the merged entity will be paying their own promoter or non-compete fee or another co-shareholder or non-compete fee. So I think first of all I think you have to see non-competes are that if it anybody did compete who will it harm it will harm the company in question who's running the business because there is a competing business and that competing business really cuts to the root of the business of the combined entity. so you're saying HDFC so like the merged entity would so be impacted if you were to go so off that is the reason that the com com entity which is getting impacted or they supposedly getting impacted uh, is probably paying this that's one but who it has to be paid to it has to be paid to a person who can is capable of causing that harm. So that's the other question. So therefore, the interesting part, part as I see is the non-compete is being paid to all the group companies. Uh, the group companies are individuals or rather group is consists of individuals where actually the real uh, expertise to compete or not compete would lie. Mm. Um, and then these, there are uh, group companies which some of them are holding companies, some of them seem to be, uh, you know, not necessarily operating companies. Some of them don't even have the word max. Uh, and therefore, it's interesting as to how this, this amount is spread across several entities uh, who may or may not have by themselves an ability to compete. But these are all promoter group companies. So, so basically, you're they're paying the promoter, whether you're paying him directly, exactly. you know, or you're paying no. some... But the concept of non-compete is this, right? You pay somebody who has ability to compete. No, because but the terms of the non-compete, as is made yeah. quite clear in the postal ballot, are that he cannot compete, whether he does it through the companies that are currently getting the payment or through any other companies for a period of four years. So in then, two, you know, then two one has to have a, he cannot compete in this business. But then you have to have a rationale of payment of non-compete to all these other companies who are mere shareholders, my but may or may not this. have the ability to compete. My question is this, what is the real threat of Analjit Singh setting up another competing life insurance business that would actually give HDFC life sleepless nights. Yeah. I mean, firstly, it isn't like this is a four-player market or five-player market. This is a fairly crowded market. Sure. Even if you were to go ahead and see wisdom or economics and putting up another insurance business, is that something that's going to give the country's largest private sector life insurance business sleepless nights? True. I don't agree on that at all. And when you look at 
uh, as he rightly pointed out that their individuals and their companies and the companies which do not even bear the name Max. So these are getting paid because they all have been clubbed as promoters. No, good entities, yeah. Acquire that, like we have some Mrs. Pia Singh or Tara Singh or whatever. They can't set up a life insurance company. Give me a break. I mean, that's that's ruled out on that. Yeah. And secondly, as you rightly started on this, that 850 crore. Now, how did they come about this number? Of yeah. So, but b- before we even get to the amount, I just want to make sure that at this point in time, I'll just summarize your positions on this on this the concept of a non compete fee being paid at all whether it's 1 rupee or 850 crore rupees sure. to Anal Jeet Singh in the manner that it's being paid by the merged entity are you in favor of it or against it? I'm very clear about it this is not a merger this is an acquisition by SDFC Life of Max and because it is an acquisition which has been camouflaged as a merger rule 8 sub clause 7 applies squarely. Okay. If I was a shareholder and if I was asked to vote I would ask basically three questions and depending upon the answers I would say yay or nay. One is that tell me that the swap ratio is not affected by this payment because okay. if this had gone into the kitty would any part of any number of shareholders or any part of shareholders would have got a better deal than what they've got okay two is it being paid to all entities who are who are by themselves capable of uh, competing because okay. if they are not then by definition that should fall sure okay and the third okay. part is a commercial part which you questioned that uh, what happens if Mr. Singh competes? Uh, uh, how is it going to, uh, I mean, is the impact going to be more than 850 crores? Uh, and what is the timing of that? Is it going to be uh, now in the next 5 years, 10 years or after my lifetime? Uh, well, the non-compete fee exists for 4 years. That might be because of CCI no, reasons. Because suppose the CCI standard is 4 suppose years. Suppose we did He can go out. 5th year, he can go and set up a... That's not the point what I'm making. I'm saying you, you let's say you don't pay 850 crores. Huh. And the business of my company, whom I am a shareholder, gets impacted. When is it going to get impacted? Now, 10 years later, because is it an immediate issue or is it a long term issue or is it a strategic issue? It would have to be 10 years later. It would take somebody to build a business of some scale and size in this market to to compete with HDFC Life and for HDFC Life shareholders to think in regret and in hindsight that, oh dear, we should have paid him a non compete fee. Yeah, so that's a question. That's a question I would ask that you need to say that the money that I am paying today. So we will answer all three questions, uh, but we will answer a fourth question also because this is the other question I put to both HDFC Life and Max Life and I did not get a response. I said how did you come upon the fee of 850 crores? You must have used some metric, some calculation, some decision on what should be a non-compete fee. Why is it only 850 crores? Why is it not 2000 crores, 1500 crores? Why not 50 crores? I didn't get an answer on this at all and I'm hoping either one of you can answer this question. Have you been able to figure out on what basis they calculated this to be 850 crores? Very simple, Manika. They robbed the minority shoulder by 100 rupees per share and gave it to Anandit and that's why it's 850 crores. But how did they decide that they were going to, you use the word rob, I won't use the word rob, but how did you? I am. I'm yeah, I know, the cause of how did they come upon the decision that they were going to take 100 rupees away from the minority shoulder? Why not 50 rupees or 200 rupees? No, but then you can say about 200 also so the same I, argument so on no, the balance. No, but it's a question to be asked, yeah, so right, this sir? Has been Where is the explanation on how this 850 Since coming is not given an explanation, I mean, like, uh, you know from a media your, person that if yeah. you if you vacate the place or if you don't have anything on that, then somebody will occupy that space. So I'm occupying that space saying that it is 100 rupee per share, what minority shoulders has been robbed off, and that's, that's what has been given. But there's no way to understand how they arrived at 100 rupees. Because they are not giving answers. Both both set of people are not giving answers. And according to me, the valuers who have done the valuation, okay, normally we have seen these valuation reports which are like completely, um, you know, concocted, if I may use that word. And, and in this, 850 does not figure out on this. So what what happened to the valuation then? If 850 crore was such a thing, then they should have also looked into it as everything rightly said. That suppose if a Analyze thing is going to really compete and what is going to be then the uh, true valuation because that's what an important factor is. How can you have the valuers don't look into non-compete and all of a sudden the company says, oh, I think you're not I don't know, did the valuers look at non-compete? They must have looked at non-compete. How do we know? But then, no, no, but no, uh, valuation reports are available, they are public documents. No, but in that, is there a non-compete? No. You're sure it's not in the valuation report? Uh, the report which is produced for the public domain doesn't have it. If they have a second report which talks about it, we would like to have that. Okay, I asked the company a very simple question, how did you arrive at 850 crores? Not just a company, I asked both companies this question. I have not got a response. I assume if it was in the valuation report, they would have copy pasted it and sent me a response. Can you explain to me how they arrived at 850 but crores? Minka, You're the expert question? lawyer, maybe you will know. So, Menka, I think you, we are debating something which is a realm of subjectivity and therefore 
uh, you will never have a right answer because there is no section, there is no case law which says this has to be the non-compete. If you see uh, in all fairness uh, to the deal, uh, you take any deal, why is a non-compete a particular number? Uh, it might be 5 crore rupees. Why is it 5 crores and not 10 crore? Now this question can arise in any case. 850 is a visible number and therefore it's a visible deal and therefore this question is visible. Uh, but you may not do a show at a 5 crore but the concept and question is still the same. Yeah, conceptually right? it's still a question. So it's in realm of subjectivity. What I think that you should get paid because of uh, your ability to compete is a question that it's subjective to me and you. It's a question which is subjective to the... Must be arrived at on, on the basis of some math, yeah, of some course, calculation, of course, right? Of course, they must so have. shouldn't these companies have to inform the shareholders so who are voting on this? How do. they arrive at 800? 50 crores? Let the shareholders ask, they will explain, that's one. Secondly, to assume that it's not because it's not there in the valuation report, it's not factored in the numbers of the valuation. I don't even know who the valuers are, but I'm sure that all this has been taken care of in contemplating a valuation report. These are independent fair valuations. These valuations will be uh, scrutinized in the court if questioned. And therefore, we have to presume that these are fair valuations. And, and they I'm should be fair valuations. That one. Out. I just wish they answered my question. However, the second part that you also must realize that all valuations per se are subjective. Of course, they so are. So if you see, if you, you see, lies in the eyes of the beholder. Right? No, it's not that much. It's not. It's more than that because if you see judgments on the subject, even the courts have said that they are not equipped to tell why yes, value yeah. X and value yes. Y. What blocks them or stops them from sharing this information? They will answer in a forum where they are supposed to answer. So if you've not put it in the postal ballot, yeah. you've not put it in the valuation report, Mr. Singh, he says he's perused that. You've definitely not put it in the press release. I've asked a specific question as a member of the media. You've not answered my question. What is this other exclusive forum that they're going to inform shareholders so, in? A forum where a shareholder has a right to ask, creditors have a right to ask, courts have a right to ask. Regional director and official liquidator have a right to ask. You and me don't have a right to ask. Okay. Then right. you put a resolution to vote. Hmm. Okay, is it not incumbent on you to give all necessary inputs to a person who is going to take a decision, right? When you say share share ratio, issue, no, no, one sec, let, let me, uh, allow me to speak for a minute on this issue. No, please do. The point is that when you are asked, there are two resolutions, right? Hmm. One is asking for a merger under uh, hmm. uh, 391, 394, hmm. where there is a valuation report, hmm. which talks about a certain swap ratio, hmm. on the basis of which, where you given that these are my independent valuers who are given this valuation and this is that valuation, this is the swap ratio and you please vote for or against it. Second resolution talks about 850 crore, hmm. vote for or against it. There is no input. Hmm. There is no input. On, on you are you're telling me on swap ratio I have the best of the, um, I have very high regard for them, but the best of the valuers who are giving you this and they are two independent, I mean independent uh, valuers who are giving this. But on 850 crore, you don't have anything. It's basically a private deal between SDFC Life and Analjit Singh. According to me, I would like to know what, what did Mr. Analjit Singh ask for? Did he no, ask no, for 15 no, no, he didn't ask for it. Oh, this did you not read the postal no, ballot? No, no, that's why I want to know. Did you not read no, the postal ballot? That's why I want to know. He did not ask asking for it. That he didn't ask for he it. Didn't ask for the it, postal I ballot doesn't say that. I don't want to put words in the mouth of the postal ballot. The postal ballot suggests that HDFC Life has offered to pay this non Yeah, that's true. All I'm saying is not capable of being described as to why it's 850 and not 650 because this question can equally arise for 650 or 6 crores also. So therefore, it's a it's a question that is to be decided by the parties and the impact they feel that it's uh, going to have uh, on the transaction. Uh, the point that is being discussed here is different, which is that should you not have had more explanations in relation to in and more disclosures, yeah. more disclosures. And that's what I told you that if I was to vote, I would ask for these three questions. Yeah. Okay. But these questions are not so answered. Now, how will you vote? So one second. We are clear that on 850 crores, there is no explanation forthcoming. Maybe there cannot be one, but there is no explanation. Why cannot be one? I'm not arguing. I'm just saying there is none. So that's one question that has no answer. The second question he asked was, will the swap ratio be affected by the payment of this non-compete fee? Of right. course. My job was. It's so obvious. It will be affected somewhere because what happens is if the company in question whom I am becoming the shareholder Correct. has to has a payout of 850 crores which otherwise it would not have had. It would be sitting in the accounts and the books and that Correct. would Absolutely. change the value in some extent. I don't know to what extent. So it is being affected. So yes, the answer to that question is yes. The answer to the previous question is don't know which is we don't know how the 850 crore rupee amount was arrived at. Your next question was, is the non-compete fee being paid to entities that are capable of competing? And I want you to answer that own question yourself. 
Because you're the one who raised the names of the yeah, entities so I, the tax of the Yeah, end. it's all there in the explanatory Yeah, statement. so do you think that the non-compete fees being so paid to entities capable of uh, how do I How do I know whether they're capable or not? All I can tell you is that this looks this looks like these are all shareholders, they're promoters. They're all members of Analjit Singh's family, I yeah. would imagine, and therefore they make no, part of the promoter group. take uh, example of uh, Boom Investments Private Limited. Must be a holding company <laughs> yeah. of an, a so promoter I, holding company of so. On the face of it, you find it difficult that is a, a holding company or an investment company would be capable of competing by itself. But it's maybe the just the company that's getting the payment, right? Maybe it's not the so company. That's the question. Yeah, you, so it's you, just a payment thing. So non-compete should be paid to the person who is capable of competing. So your answer to this question is what? The question is this. I'm raising exactly the same question as you. Is no, the I'm raising the question. Fee? I'm not I answering my question. You have to answer the question. <laughs> no, no, I don't have to answer the question. I think he has answered the question. With facts I'm not answering the no, question. No, no. But he's saying that the one who's capable of competing with you. So you have to establish. I'm believe. not. Yeah. I'm not the entity is being paid a non-competing. How do I answer that question? Only people who know facts can demonstrate yeah. whether it is yes. or it is not. So if I I let me rephrase rephrase what I said. If I was a shareholder. I would ask this question to people who can answer this question, not in a debate, but factually. And who are the people who can answer this question? The, the, company. the, company, the, the company, the company, or the parties all involved. Or the Where part is the company supposed to explain all of this if not in the postal ballot? In the meeting. In well, the there's no meeting. There's but there's no meeting there's because no it's meeting. a postal, postal ballot. ballot. Yeah, postal so ballot. They, 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 they should have explained in postal ballot. Yeah, but then but there's not. The matter is also so before court, right? Can I use legal language because you cannot answer your own question? The question has become infractious. No, no, not really. No, but that's how it not is. Not really. Right? Not really. This question can be posed before a court. This question can okay, be posed fine. as an objection okay. before reason. Okay, you said that many judges express that they are not competent even to give an opinion on that. So court may not be in the right forum. Okay, okay, fine. Yeah. The last question you asked was, what happened or what would happen if Ananjit Singh were to compete with this business? Do you think it would be of material damage? I am certainly can't because I am not, I'm not at all equipped. But I would only have a benchmark out here that somebody would need to demonstrate to me to say that this 850 crores is far cheaper than the impact it would have had does if he com uh, if he competed who is that somebody that needs to demonstrate but either the company itself where would he demonstrate all of this where is that explanation uh, to any of the, so it's not come here so either that's what i'm saying there are three three four forums available this matter is not over yeah, fair. Really, okay right? have it is over though if the shareholders vote in favor of this in the post no, it's not because shared. then it is yeah, then it has gone through without the discussion that is required yeah but this. this people can still come and can raise these questions yeah uh, but court normally court. don't entertain once it is already approved uh, by the shareholders uh, uh, once the shareholders have approved, approved would not have made any difference even if Analjit wants today also okay <laughs> if he said 850 crore not paid Analjit is free to compete okay I don't think it's going to make any impact and this is my business sense but my point is much larger than this okay today when you are defining Analjit Singh as the as you rightly said or, or perhaps you said that founder of Max Life yes he has he's now built what, a good business what happens to Mitsui Sumitomo no, 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 one sec. No, 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 you can't be dismissive like this. No, no, I'm not dismissive. You, you, I don't you, have answers. You don't, I don't have answers. Don't sure. Okay, no, 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 I don't have an answer. Now my question is very pertinent. Mr. Analjit Singh never knew anything about life insurance. He was not a person who was really, un, I mean, from, from understanding point of view, that he was a person who really had knowledge or deep knowledge of insurance business at all. It was actually a Mitsui Sumitomo insurance company. He partnered with them. He had no knowledge of insurance on that and, and, and uh, set up an insurance company. Today, we are not paying any money to Mitsui, Sumitomo, because they are the people. Suppose tomorrow they compete, then what happens? If the, any com non compete is to be paid in this case, is only to Mitsui, Sumitomo, not to anyone else. Mr. Singh, we started by posing the question what should Max's shareholders do? If you were, hypothetically speaking, a shareholder who had to vote in this postal ballot, Okay. Which way would you vote? 
Yeah, so as I said, I would ask those questions. But I we just ask those four yeah, questions. So yeah. so you I, know what the answers no, are. I don't know what the answers are because you have answered that question. I need somebody who knows the matter to answer that question. That's one. But those two. answers are not available in the postal yeah. ballot. So and you have to vote are, on the basis of the postal ballot. There are forums to ask those questions. I'm saying how will you vote on the postal ballot? On 24th September. You don't have time now to go to court and say I'm that. not saying go to court and all of that. Yeah. If you had to vote in this vote postal ballot, September, how, will how you would you vote? I'm trying to make two points here, Abhijit. One would, is we are asking... I would vote in favour. Uh, because I would not see um, non-compete as the only issue. Fair enough. Right? This is a great topic for this uh, discussion. Uh, but there is a larger aspect to the business, uh, which is that if this whole merger didn't make sense uh, yeah. for HDFC or for the combined entity uh, in general over the number of years, uh, then this merger would not have taken place. Fair enough. There are, uh, fair amount of prudent players, uh, stakeholders in this and if all of them had come together to say that this in the long run or in the medium term or in the short term is going to really be really great business sense, then merely because there is a component which I may or may not view to be fair, uh, I am not going to be blinded towards the macro picture of the proposition. Fair enough. So my answer is going to be if I am put a, if you like you put a gun on my head, you vote or no. Uh, so so I suppose there was a hypothetical or a real gun on my uh, head, uh, I would say yes, uh, because I would presume that wiser counsel has gone in the larger context of things Fair. and life is not about siloed proposition of fairness or unfairness. So now let me come to you as the final question and that is this, exactly the one I posed at the beginning. Based on the information you have, do you think this non-compete is genuine and justifiable as Abhijit put it? Do you lack information? Or do you think you have enough information to make that decision? And if you think you have enough information to make that decision, what would your decision be? You have asked me, I think, uh, four questions and uh, let me answer one by one. Uh, do you have enough information? Do I have enough information? Answer is no. Okay. Whether Analjit Singh himself is capable of competing with the merged entity, hmm. because the merger is one aspect. As I explained to you, there are yes. two different aspects. One is merger, one is 850 crore. Whether he is capable and competent of giving that kind of a threat to the merge entity, the answer is no. And if at all there is non-compete to be paid, according to me, it should have been paid to Mitsui Sumitomo Incorporation, Japan. Well, okay, it's interesting. So we have two differing points of view here. And gentlemen, you have not made the job of shareholders any easier. Thank you, Abhijit. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Singhvi, for joining us. And thank you very much for tuning in to The Fine Print on Bloomberg Quint.